for joining me. My name is Chuck Destro, founder of Destro Machines. So with all the craziness that's been going on recently, we've seen a major rise in people swimming in really whatever water they can find. And while some of these videos are entertaining, they're fun, a lot of them are showing things that could have some detrimental effects down the road for these swimmers. So that's why I'm making this video, um, because if this is your only option, um, I'm going to cover the best ways to do this and how to eliminate the negative effects. So in order to understand what's going on here, I have to explain how the swimming stroke actually propels you down the pool. Okay, so from the fluid dynamics equations that we've solved for here, um, you can see that having high velocity of the arm, having big arms, and having good technique all increase your propulsive force down the pool, uh, while the velocity of the water, or actually your swimming speed in this case, will decrease the propulsive force that you are able to generate. Many of you will notice that when you take your first stroke, it's really difficult to get your arm through the water. But then once you get up to speed, the stroke becomes easier. So this is why when we swim stationary, the forces on our arms drastically increase. And if the swimmer isn't powerful enough to deal with these increased forces, then two things will happen. You'll have a major breakdown in tempo and you'll have a major breakdown in technique. This breakdown in technique could lead to injuries down the road, bad habits, and also slower swim times in races. Typically speed and power sports need to train in the 60 to 80% of their max ranges. So if we're training higher than this 80%, we start to train strength rather than speed and power. And this is why you'll see guys who have four, five, 600 pound back squat, but they can't jump six inches off the ground or they're slower than the sloth from Zootopia. Ultimately, training over 80% can make you slow. And if we train under the 60% of our max ranges, we begin to emphasize more muscular endurance rather than speed and power. So if we're swimming stationary and we're not powerful enough to do our stroke correctly to be in that 60 to 80% range, we need to either increase our velocity or decrease the size of our hands. So we can use fist drill or anti-paddles to accomplish this. And if we're swimming stationary and it's not enough resistance for us, this is where paddles come into play. You can increase the size of your hands with the paddles. So paddles and anti-paddles are great for making gross adjustments to our force. However, we need to be able to make small adjustments as, as we develop and as we get stronger. This is where devices like swim towers come into play. So we can in incrementally adjust our velocity so that allows us to have greater control over the forces that we're exerting on our muscles. And as we grow and as we get stronger, we can increase those so that we we'll always stay in the correct range. So thank you. If you like this video, please let us know. If you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out um, and have a good day.